Bethel Hanbury Elementary School in the heart of Blythewood, South Carolina. A South Carolina school of promise and South Carolina red carpet school. Home of many Palmetto Gold and Silver Awards and the state's Exemplary Writing Award. You learn a lot. I think you really learn a lot at Bethel Hanbury. If you walk on our campus as a visitor for the first time, you're going to see a place that looks old compared to other schools in our very district. But once you walk in the door, I hope you experience the feeling uh, that's hard to express. The warmth, the caring, the fact that you're in a place where you're comfortable. And uh, many people come through our building and the first thing they say to us, well, you know, it is an older building, but you just feel at home here at a place where you want your children to uh, be educated. History is important at this school because it's personal. Right across this road where um, our school is, um, Sherman's troops marched right over right on this road. He um, burned crops, destroyed animals, and um, burned down homes. This school either used to be either a high school or middle school before I came here. You're right, Mackenzie. Over the last century, your school has served many generations of students and has had many names on the front of many different buildings. It becomes a little confusing, but the bottom line is thousands of students in the last century have received a quality education from within these walls. With help from school counselor Dr. Gail Beanstalk's Time Travelers Club and her fabulous student interviewers, Let's go back in time as we trace the rich history of education in Blythewood, share stories, and meet many of the people whose lives were shaped at this wonderful school. I met uh, the people and they, they were really nice and um, they had a lot to say and it sounded like they, they loved um, this school too. Our journey begins in the early 20th century with a focus on not one school but two schools that were located near each other. A one-room wooden schoolhouse was built on Highway 21 where Blythewood Academy stands today. It was called the Blythewood School, and during the era of segregation, only white students could attend. During the 1920s, a two-story brick building and an auditorium were built. The original building was torn down in 1939. The school served students first through 12th grade until 1970 when high school students were transferred to the new Spring Valley High School and later to Ridgeview High. Grammar school students remained at Blythewood School until 1991 when Bethel Hanbury opened and the two schools were merged. Blythewood historian Frankie McLean has a vision of what life was like at Blythewood School from a 1909 letter from her father-in-law. And most of the students came on horses and buggies, but one gentleman named Dr. Mike Langford, he had the only car in Blythewood. And sometimes it would be a treat for the children to watch him bring his children to school. Sisters Linda Creech Peak and Margaret Creech Dubard grew up attending Blythewood School. My graduating class were 29 people. Now, I don't know how many girls we had to graduate, but there were three Lindas in my class. I I think someone told me that there was a movie star named Linda about the time. That's why the name was so popular. When I started to school, I think that our class, 1948, was the largest class up until that time that had attended Blythewood School. And there were over 40 of us, and we were all in the same not just the same grade, but the same class. This was before they started dividing the classes. And I've often thought about the poor teacher. Her name was Miss Bigham. Meanwhile, black children needed a place to learn. So in the early 1900s, the nearby Bethel Baptist Church donated 30 acres of land to build a schoolhouse that became known as the Bethel School. Children ranging from six years old to the late teens attended, and that's where Bethel Hanbury stands today. Frances McDonald Davis is a 1953 graduate. At first it was a wooden building and we outgrew that and later on they built a school. Um, the elementary school was on the lower end of the ramp, the high school was on the upper end and the cafeteria was across from the elementary school. We had to share books. We didn't have enough books for everybody, so we shared books. We did not have a gym or any similar room. 
uh, our graduation was held on the front steps of the building. And we prayed all day that it would rain. I graduated in fifth day. Lula Ensminger, who recently passed away, enjoyed her years as both a student and employee. She was the secretary at the school for many years and got a kick out of coming back to look through old yearbooks. The history of the Bethel School is often tied to the years and leadership of Annie Garrick Hanbury, who instilled the importance of education and demanded excellence from her students for many generations. In 1936, she began teaching at the Bethel School, which was a two-room, two-teacher house, and became principal in the early 1940s. More than 70 years later, the memories and stories of Annie Hanbury live on with the utmost respect and fondest recollections. Annie Garrett uh, was, the, uh, was born 1903. She grew up on Wheeler Hill um, section in Columbia. She graduated from Benedict College in 1921 and began teaching. And when she got married, the teachers at that time were not allowed to teach in the city school. So she came to Blythewood, and that's how she got to Blythewood. And she worked in uh, the system here for approximately 50 years. She not only taught me, she taught my mom, and she taught everybody because she was the only principal at the school. So everybody who went here had to go through under her jurisdiction. So it was always a situation where you could never really do anything bad because she knew everybody. She just called grandma and called granddad and called your mama and everybody else so you was in trouble. Miss Hanbury, she was a very disciplined lady. You know, she was the only principal of high school. Like I said, I, I was in the primary grades when she was the principal. So but I had my knowledge of knowing her, you know, you all had to walk the hall with your shirt tails tucked in back in those days. No hats on in the building. So she was a very disciplined lady, you know, and very strong. Annie Hanbury made a big impact on Air Force Command Chief James Wood's life. Annie E. Hanbury was a fine lady, and her husband was dean at the Benedict College at the time. And if I'm not mistaken, Mrs. Hanbury was the first might have been the first female principal in the state of South Carolina, but I know she was the first black uh, female principal in the state of South Carolina. Mrs. Hanbury would pick our classes for us. We did not have a choice of choosing what we wanted to take in high school. Mrs. Hanbury chose our classes. Because we were in Pontiac, Mrs. Hanbury said, you're going to take agriculture. So <laughs> well, the guys from Pontiac, South Carolina, had to take agriculture, and we had to have chickens, we had to have cow, uh, pigs, uh, we had to have gardens. We, we had no area for that, but we had, to, we had to have our fathers clear some area in the woods so we can plant these things, so we can pass this course. She taught us a lot about how to be a man as far as the young men were concerned, and she taught the young girls how to be a, a lady. In 1942, a larger four-room schoolhouse was built on the same site to accommodate high school students. It was a long gray building with lots of windows. Students completed high school in their junior year until 1947 when 12th grade was added. In 1967, Bethel High School was renamed in honor of Miss Hanbury. Over the next few decades, reshuffling continued. The last graduating classes of both Blythewood School and Annie Hanbury High School received their diplomas in 1970. That's when the new Spring Valley High School opened. Blythewood schools became totally integrated as Bethel Hanbury became Bethel Middle, Hanbury High became Hanbury Junior High, Blythewood Elementary and High became Blythewood Elementary. Ten years later, Bethel Middle and Hanbury Junior were combined as Bethel Hanbury Middle and Blythewood Elementary continued to serve younger students. It was during those years that many of today's Richland II teachers and employees were growing up in the district. They have such fond memories and felt they received a wonderful education. I've, I've been here either as a student or teacher for almost half of my life, literally. And um, I don't think you can find my children go to school here. And I don't think you can find a better school, better community. It's, um, it's the total package. I was here in the 80s. And so the 80s, of course, we had the great music of the 80s that everybody loved so much. Um, we had the parachute pants that everybody was so into, the Chuck Taylor All-Stars for tennis shoes. Um, people were big into their friends. You know, really, that was an important thing. Um, we had big hair. 
So everybody wanted to make sure their hair looked good. So here's the new construction of the uh, building. That was, this is about six or seven years old. And then Custodian Kenny Griffin, who recently retired after 34 years, recalls all of the many positive changes he has seen through the years. It's been a wonderful experience that I've seen kids grow. That so there are a couple of teachers here that when I started working, went to school here, and now they're back here teaching. The principal was Luther Martin, and his office was in what was the upper building, the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade building. When I was here, you didn't have air conditioning. Um, the, the one whole wall in the classroom was windows that you could open and it got very hot. We could wear shorts, um, so you know when it was really hot we would wear shorts, probably just a lot of the same things, I mean blue jeans, um, there were no uniforms at that time. And this was really out in the sticks, this was the country, I mean it was really, really far out and you didn't have other schools. Leanne Lomas Armstrong and Alice Earls Wofford both attended school here and have enjoyed their teaching careers here too. How was the school was different back then? Okay, when I went to school here, the area that has the office and the kindergarten classrooms was actually open and outside. We had um, portables, we had PTO back then, just like we do now. Um, we don't, we didn't have BHE bucks or anything um, like that. But you were rewarded with extra recess and, you know, ice cream parties and um, things like that. That, you know, we still have around here today. You remember I said there was a stage that you where the cafeteria is. Um, there used to be a stage, and we did a play. I don't remember what the name of it was, but we were all toys in a. Um, toy shop that came to life. I was a cheerleader, so basketball games in that gym, and then we had boy-girl dances, we had Halloween dances and Christmas dances, so the gym was a lot of fun. Miss Goins could cook, and my favorite thing though was vegetable soup and peanut butter and honey sandwiches, or when she made macaroni, because ooh, she could cook. My very best friend that I have today I met here at Bethlehem Berry when we were in fourth and fifth grade, and she is still my best friend today. I still talk to her every week. So I think it's important that you kids know that how you treat people and the friends that you are to people today go on for a lifetime. Financial consultant Larry Griffin attended Bethlehem Berry until Spring Valley opened for high school. My grandfather who raised me was also the janitor here like Mr. Griffin is. Uh, so it kind of like runs in the family. So I couldn't really get in any bad trouble because uh, he was walking up and down the hall all the time. So all I had to do was reach out and get him and I was going to be in double trouble. I, we, I know we had the best cooks in the world. And half of them were relatives of mine, so I know they cook <laughs> real good anyway. But yeah, we had awesome food. The books and stuff that we were using were sub-tier books. Uh, we didn't get the brand new books. We got the books that was passed down. So we had to fight doubly hard in order to stay on the same level in order that if we were fortunate enough to get out of school and go to college, that we could be on the same level as the kids who had the best, the best books. Same way it was in sports. Our equipment was never really new. Griffin was a star athlete playing football, basketball, and track. Jim Woods played on the first football team at the school in the early 60s. Both men are part of the Bethel Hanbury Athletic Alumni Association to help kids become successful. A lot of the uh, graduates of the school, we just kind of want to keep the name alive and bring it back and give something to the, the school. So we uh, go out and we watch the football games, we watch the basketball games, we watch track, and we try and select people that we feel that uh, have excelled athletically and also academically. The Bethlehem Berry Athletic Alumni Association is trying to set up so that we can keep the heritage, uh, the attitude of what we went through passed through to our younger generation because they don't really understand and don't know. They don't know what it was to be at Bethel. All they know is uh, Spring Valley, Ridgeview, and the, and the new era. And that's all well and good, but the things that we went through to get there, we want to try to make sure that they under still understand those things. Many of Richland II district officials got their start at this school. Those include Dr. Ben Nesbitt, Luther Martin, Willie R. Rogers, 
and retired community relations director Dr. Julia Boyd. And everyone had vivid memories of former assistant principal Lottie Chisholm, who serves as the longtime director of Richland II Student Services. The thing about Ms. Chisholm is she had the loudest snap in the world. So if we were in the gym and we were having a pep rally, you could hear that snap. It would make the window shake. Oh, yes. Snap. Over here. Right now. <laughs> I was really scared of an assistant principal. Her name was Lottie Chisholm. I don't know if you've ever met her, but I was really scared of her. She's a super nice person. She just scared us. Hey, that lady, boy, she may be mean looking, but she is really, really, we love her. We really care for Miss Chisholm. Never, never wanted me to leave. Every year, Miss Chisholm, please don't leave us. Don't go anywhere. And she had big old hair that she still has now, and she'd wear fancy, sparkly shoes all the time. But oh yes, yeah, she loved to dress up. And they needed to know, hey, this old woman can come up here with fancy shoes on. I'm gonna grow up and be just like that woman. So I had a lot of them just to portray Miss Chisholm. I love that big hair, Miss Chisholm. I love everything about you. When I was in school, you could get paddled at school, mm -hmm. um, and um, I will say Miss Chisholm did not hesitate to do that. My philosophy on that is, don't do anything to anybody else's child that you wouldn't do to your own. So therefore, the I have lawyers and doctors and architects and I got people in place everywhere because of the touch that I gave them and the love that I gave them and helping them to feel good about themselves. We'd like to call our meeting to order. The Blythewood Historical Society preserves, protects, and nurtures the history of this South Carolina town. Long before I-77 and fast food restaurants and for more than 100 years, the children in the Blythewood area have received a fine education, starting at the Blythewood School, which is now Blythewood Academy, and soon followed by the Bethel School, which is home to Bethel Hanbury. Because of the large growth in Blythewood, many new Richland II schools have been opened in the area. Blythewood Middle, 1996, Round Top Elementary, 2003, Blythewood High School, 2005, Langford Elementary, 2010, Muller Road Middle, 2011, and the new Westwood High School are continuing the legacy of providing a fine education to every student. Since 1991, Bethel Hanbury Elementary School has been a shining star in the Richland II school system. Students have received a wonderful education and have gone on to great achievements. Teachers who know how to engage their students and teach creatively have led to many success stories. If you walk in one of our classrooms, you're going to see teachers who are passionate about making connections with students. Um, they're very focused on trying to meet their needs. Certainly our teachers are very uh, good at making sure that they engage our students in the routines of not just learning about uh, the academics that uh, requires them for the working world, but just being able to connect with other people in relationships and making sure that that carries them onto a life of uh, much success. This is the hometown feel of a school like when we were here and I think a lot of that has to do with the teachers growing up here and going to the school, their kids going to the school and the kids who are here now, a lot of their parents went here too and it just keeps the feel of the school very homey and very small town. It's a country and community school all wrapped up in one. You know what I'm saying? Those are my best years in education because I feel like I made a difference with the children there. It was it's wonderful because I feel like I'm home and families are so important in the Blythewood area and it's neat to see that continue. It's neat to be able to teach my friends' children who went here because we were all we're all raised pretty much the same with the same expe expectations. We have kind of have a saying here at Bethel Hanbury that once you become part of the family, you're always part of the family. So no matter when you may leave that door, that door is always open and you're always always um, welcome back. I said if I had to do it again, I would do it all over again because this is one of the finest schools, double A school, I, I felt in the area. The folks who've gone before us have always uh, been hardworking people and the, that work ethic, I hope, is passed on from generation to generation. Uh, we've also realized that you have to take care of one another. Um, this community is always about uh, giving to the community as it gives to you. And so I'm very grateful to be a part of that process. I want our children to uh, 
grasp that understanding of our history and be able to carry that forward in their work habits and um, build upon those past successes because that is a tradition of excellence we want to carry on. Bethel Hanbury Elementary, filled with memories and traditions, hopes and dreams for past, present, and future generations. <laughs>